Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical year that we are entering into. It is the year 5783. And this new year is known as Rosh Hashanah, and it literally means the head of the year. The word Rosh in Hebrew means head, Shana means year. And this new year, this Rosh Hashanah, begins every year on the first day of the biblical month of Tishri. And this year in 2022, the first day of Tishri begins on Sunday night, September 25th. And that is when the civil calendar year flips over from 5782 into 5783. And this number is based on creation. It is like the physical birth of the earth or the age of the earth. And we can gain prophetic insight as we look at the numbers of the year because in the Hebrew alphabet, every letter is connected with a number and also a picture and an action. So my name is Christine Vallis and I am blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys in real time. So thanks so much for tuning in. I pray that you are blessed by this teaching. So when I first started learning about God's calendar about 10 years ago or so, God began giving me chalkboards as like a visual so I would remember each month and um, I've been blessed to share them with you all these past few years. And then when we were moving into this new decade, um, the Lord gave me an idea for a chalkboard drawing for the year and the decade and he's been giving me one ever since. So, so I'm excited to share this year's chalkboard 5783 with you guys. Now, if you want to check out any of the teachings for the biblical months, or any of the past years, you can just go to my website, christinevalles.com, or my Facebook page, or YouTube, and you can check out all the full teachings right there. So we are moving along in this decade of the 80s, and we learned that the number 80 in the Hebrew alphabet is pay, right here on the chalkboard, and it means a mouth, an opening, to speak, to decree, to declare, to open itself, and it has two forms, just like our mouth, you know, open and closed. And we also learned the truth of um, Matthew 12, 34, that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and Proverbs 18, 21, that says, death and life are in the power of our tongue. And we also mentioned how we shouldn't have been surprised when we kicked off this decade of the mouth that the very area that the Lord would be encouraging us in would be the same area that the enemy would try to come against us, of course, with COVID-19. Well, he may have tried to steal our breaths and shut our mouths and keep us in our homes, but greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. And what the enemy has meant for evil, God has been and is continuing to work for good because the truth is God's word cannot be bound and the Spirit of God has been stirring and igniting many of our hearts and giving us a holy boldness and confidence to continue to speak to continue to breathe to continue to gather to continue on in his word as his true disciples because we are truly more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And so while many of the culture may be going woke, many more hearts are being awakened to the great love of God. And many spiritual leaders believe that we are actually in the beginning of the third great awakening. And I believe that as well. So we just finished the biblical year 5782. It was the year of the house. It was also a sabbatical year of rest and I greatly enjoyed my sabbatical year of rest. And I pray you enjoyed a season of Sabbath as well. It was a year to declare his rest over our house. And I made this declaration many times over myself and our house and, and over others. And you know, I will continue to do so because this is our reality for those of us in Christ. We carry his rest with us into every new year and every new day.
So now we are crossing over into the new year 5783. And here in this year, we're going to combine the Hebrew letter pay, which is 80, with the number three, which you see over here on the chalkboard, which is connected to the Hebrew letter gimel. And you see it depicted here. It um, has a value of three. It is also a picture of a camel, if you haven't guessed it. It means provision. It means to rise up, to lift up. And if you look at the letter, it actually looks like there's a foot out. And so that indicates forward motion, even a rich man walking. So we have seen that we can gain prophetic insight when we combine you know, these two numbers, these two letters and all that they mean together. And I sense the Lord saying for this year that we are to come up and out of a place of resting and receiving and now rise and release His abundant provision. Isn't that awesome? We are blessed to be a blessing, as it says in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. We are blessed to rest and receive and then called to rise up from that place of rest and release the blessings that we have received. So now provision, by definition, means supply that has been made in advance for future use. And this is exactly how our God, the God of the Bible, operates. And not just provision, but abundant, extravagant provision. And you know, I could have filled uh, 20 chalkboards with 100 Bible verses and a caravan of camels, and it still wouldn't be enough to express his extravagant provision toward us. And we see this right in the beginning of the Bible in creation in Genesis where God created everything that man would ever need before he created him, right? This was his extravagant provision supply made in advance. He did this for Adam and he has done this for us. This is the true nature of our God. He is the giver of all good things. He is El Shaddai, not El Chipo, right? He is the lavish giver. He is not a taker. And it's all because of his great love for us. John 3, 16, we know it well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In Romans 8, 32, it says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Wow, we are blessed. And you know, we can read about God's abundant provision in Psalm 65. I just kind of stumbled upon it uh, about a month ago. And Psalm 65, 11, which I, we see here in the middle of the two humps here on the chalkboard. This verse jumped out at me because it says, You, Lord, crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. So I had to look up that word crowned and it means to surmount or to overcome. And I love that because now that means that the Lord crowns the year or overcomes the year with his goodness, with his bounty, with his abundance, not with lack, right? And his paths drip with abundance, with oil, with fatness. What a perspective as we begin this new year, that we overcome the year with his goodness, not with our striving, not with our own efforts, but with his abundance. So before we jump into the rest of the chalkboard teaching, I want to let you know of these two new resources that we have available for this new year, 5783. And the first is the prophetic flashcard for this new year. And it's basically exactly this chalkboard here behind me, but in a five by seven form. And on the back, it has all the scriptures, the dates, when the year starts, the Hebrew letters and even a link for this chalkboard teaching. So you can find this available on my website as well as the anointing oil, 100% organic ingredients that I have created myself. 
And you can find these resources as well as others in the shop on my website. I pray they encourage you to rise up and release what you have been freely given in Christ. So the Lord has given me an abundance of scriptures that we're going to go through here as we get into the teaching. But I felt the Lord really wanted us to look at this camel here before we get into any of the verses. And so if we look at a camel in the natural, of course, they are known for their humps, right? And they all have at least one. And you see this one has two, right? And they are not full of water, but they are actually full of fat that works for them, right? They are full of goodness. And this fat is released as their bodies metabolize. This fat, it releases water. It keeps them cool. It gives them energy. And speaking of water, do you know that camels can drink up to 30 gallons in just over 10 minutes? And that sustains them for a long period of time. And we see that they stand tall with their long legs and their long neck and they rise over six feet above the hot ground and elements and even their eyes and nose and mouth are designed to shield from the hot and blowing sand they have three sets of eyelids two rows of long lashes and even the ability to shut their nostrils pretty cool so God created camels with these characteristics and many more and made them the ideal animals for sturdy and reliable transportation. They move with confidence and a mission and they not only transport people, but they transport supply. And in the Bible days, you know, if you saw a camel coming, that would be like seeing the UPS truck or the Amazon truck, right, even better, pulling up to your driveway. And they are very strong, you know, they carry up to a thousand pounds and they travel at a speed of up to 40 miles an hour. And so when we see camels coming in scripture, there is always expectancy because provision is coming. There is supply. And whether it is a caravan of riches from the Queen of Sheba, a wife for Isaac, or wise men bearing gold, frankincense, and myrrh for the birth of Messiah, there is hope on the horizon and shouts of joy because the camels are coming. So I sense the Lord giving us this picture of a physical camel and is calling us to be spiritual camels, to be a gamel, to be this third letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But in order to be a true gimel, or a true number three of the Hebrew alphabet, we really have to look back at the number one and number two. We basically have to know our aleph bet because we can only give what we have received. So I wanted to make a quick little flashcard of the first three letters of the Hebrew alphabet because if we look at them in order, we will see that there is a progression here. So let's first look at the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet briefly. It is the Hebrew letter Aleph and it's right here. It has a value of one. It is a picture of a leader, an ox, a father, or Abba father. He is the head or the master of the house. And so it all starts here with our Abba father, knowing him as our heavenly father, knowing and believing him, receiving his great love for us, because the more we know that we are loved by our heavenly father, the more we will trust him, right? Galatians 5, 6 says that faith works by love. So our faith, our believing in God works or is generated by knowing that we are loved by God. And the more we know that God is for us and not against us, that he loves us and he has not mad at us, the more his perfect love will begin to cast out every fear. Because in Romans it says, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption. And that's why we can cry, Abba, Father, as the children of God, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So everything starts from here. Everything begins with the Aleph, with our Abba, Father, knowing him and his great love 
for us. So I just have to pause here. If you do not know the Lord as your heavenly father and receive Jesus as his son, I pray that you ask the Lord to reveal himself to you and his great love for you. And as he does, just receive the love of God and his forgiveness and you will become a child of God because life all begins here, receiving God as our heavenly father and Jesus as his son who bridged the gap and brought us back into relationship with him. So moving on, we move from the first letter Aleph onto the Hebrew letter Bet, which is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It has a value of two. It is a picture of a house or a family, even a body or the church. So after we have received Abba as our heavenly father, he takes us then into his house and it is a place of resting and receiving and you know we've experienced that last year in 5782 it's here that we receive physical and spiritual rest we discover that we are accepted in the beloved we are no longer slaves but sons and daughters we discover our place in his household in his family and our hearts become established as we become rooted and grounded in his love. It's in his house that we receive our father's words and he teaches us and raises us up by his words, not by hardship. And he shows us our true and new identity in him, that we have a hope and a future and that we are more than conquerors in Christ who loved us. He shows us that we've been translated into the new kingdom of his dear son and that we carry royal authority. Now, if we look close at this second letter, the bet, it is a picture of a house, but you notice it has an open side. So it's like a picture of a house with an open door. So to me, that shows that we are to rest and receive in the Father's house and then go out the door and release the blessings that we have received. And so the good news is when we go out the door of his house, he goes with us because as believers, his spirit resides in us 24 seven. And we are actually God's house, right? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are his habitation. So wherever we go, he goes with us. We are blessed coming in and going out. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we go out full of his power and boldness to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. So as we rest and receive in our Father's house, we discover that we are a full house, but the blessings that we have received were never meant to end in our own house, but to be released to others. So it is then that we can be a genuine and generous gimel, the third letter here of the Hebrew alphabet, because after resting and receiving in our Father's house, we are loaded up with enough and extra, two humps full of his goodness, his fatness, to overcome the year, to overcome the day. So we rise up with our eyes up, moving forward, full of his life and provision to deliver to others. And we are not loaded down with the cares of this world because we've learned to cast our cares upon our Father because we know that he cares for us and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we are ready in season and out of season as we press forward with a sturdy confidence in the Father's great love for us. And we go out with joy and we are blessed to be a blessing to bring his kindness and his refreshing to the ones he brings around us. And you know, Jesus, Yeshua, was the ultimate Gimel, wasn't he? He was born of the Father. He knew he was God's beloved son. He was made rich in every way and he left his heavenly home and he came to earth, right? Full of compassion, full of mercy, strength, wisdom, and kindness. And he came to give us life and life abundantly. John 10.10 10 says the thief only comes in order to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that they may have life and life abundantly. So now that we've seen this progression in the first three letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, I want to now just briefly go through the scriptures that the Lord has given me. And you'll see the scriptures correlate with this progression. And I encourage you to meditate, to chew on, and declare these scriptures 
over your life as you move into and through this new year, 5783. So the first one here is Genesis 12, 1 through 3. And the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So this was God's initial promise to Abraham and now to us as believers because we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to this promise as it talks about in Galatians 3.29. So this promise is ours in Christ. When we receive Abba as our Heavenly Father, He blesses us. He gives us favor. And because He blesses us, we can be a blessing to others. And the blessings that we have received were never intended to be hoarded away, but to be shared with others because the door of Abba's house is always opened. So we have been blessed to be a blessing. So the question comes up, well, what exactly have we been blessed with as believers in Christ? And so the word is full of scriptures. There's a lot. So um, we're going to start with Ephesians 1, 3, right here on the chalkboard. And this says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So Paul is speaking to the believers in Ephesus. And before he tells them anything else, he tells them and reminds them that they are blessed. <laughs> and I think that's what God is reminding us right now here at the beginning of the year that we are blessed. We need to know this. And then Paul starts to unpack these blessings in the book of Ephesians. So I encourage you to check it out. And here are just a few of the spiritual blessings that we have been given. We are loved and accepted in the beloved. We have been adopted, redeemed, forgiven. We've been given an inheritance. We have all wisdom. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We have the resurrection power of Jesus living in us. We have the riches of his grace and we have the whole armor of God. And that's just to name a few, right? And so here's something to note though. Where are these blessings? It says that they're in heavenly places in Christ. And so you may read that and see, well, that seems so far away. But that's not the case because the reality is Ephesians 2, 6 tells us that we as believers are seated in heavenly places with Christ now. <laughs> so that means that we are full and complete with every spiritual blessing here and now in our spirit man. And you know, Philippians 4.19 declares, God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So where is glory? Well, that's the heavenly places, exactly where we are seated with him now. So this is where we operate from. We draw from the inside out. We have everything we need in our spirit, man, here and now. So I pray we all receive a revelation of this as Paul talks about in Ephesians 3, 19, that we are filled with all of the fullness of God. Okay, so now to look at another scripture. It's 1 Corinthians chapter one, verses four through nine. And Paul begins to tell the Corinthians that they have been enriched in everything by him. So he says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift. Isn't this awesome? So this verse declares that we have been enriched with everything. That means we have been made wealthy in everything 
in Christ as believers. Galatians 5 tells us we've been enriched with all of the fruit of the Spirit here and now in our spirit man. 1 Corinthians talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And because of Jesus' perfect sacrifice, we've been enriched with all of the blessings in Deuteronomy 28. We have everything in Christ. And you know, the book of Colossians highlights these riches. It talks about how in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and how we are hidden in Christ and how in Him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and how we are complete in Him. So if it's in Christ, it's in us, right? As 2 Corinthians says, we are new creations in Christ. And so as He is, so we are in this world. And specifically here in, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about being enriched with all utterance and knowledge. And how important is that here in the decade of declaration? We are his mouthpiece. We have his mind. So we are not lacking in any gift. So whether we are teaching, sharing our testimony, or giving a prophetic word, we can do so with confidence because he has enriched us with his words and with his his wisdom so he says open up your mouth and i will fill it but it really is true we have been made rich just as the word says we have been made wealthy and when you know you are rich it is easy to give things away because you have an abundance right so let us get a revelation that we've been enriched in every way in christ so now that we see how blessed we really are in Christ, let's hear Jesus' words of instruction next. Here in Matthew chapter 10, 7 and 8, he says, Freely you have received, so freely give. And so here Jesus was sending out his 12 disciples. He says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So here Jesus called them each by name. He gave them power and authority. He told them specifically where not to go and where to go. He told them what to say and what to do. In real time, Jesus is doing the same for us. He calls us each by name. He's given us power and authority. He's given us his word. He's given us his direction. And then he commands us to freely give away what we have freely received in him. But now you may be saying, well, I don't know if I have exactly what it takes to freely give what I've freely been given. I don't think I am able to do it. And so be encouraged because the next scriptures are going to show us that it's by His grace, which is His ability, not ours. So this is such a relief and so refreshing. So let's look at 2 Corinthians um, chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. It says, Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God who has made us able ministers of the new covenant. Ah, that just gives me a sigh of relief. He has made us able ministers. We are capable and it's by his grace, not our flesh, but his ability in us. And so by his grace, we release his supply. And just like Peter said to the lame man, silver and gold, I have not. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, um, it really underscores this point in verse 8. And it says that God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, in all times, having all you need, that you will abound in every good work. I love that. So talk about abundant provision. This verse is said to be the New Testament's definition of prosperity, that God is able to make all of his ability abound toward us in all things at all times so that we can abound in every good work to partner with him. Enough for ourselves and extra for others, bread and seed. And even in Deuteronomy 8.18, this is another verse that talks about 
God's ability in our lives. It says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So this was God's promise to the Israelites and now ours in Christ. We have the promise of his grace, his ability to create wealth, but not just accumulate it. So, so let's ask the Lord for witty inventions and wisdom to create wealth. And why? What's the purpose? The purpose is that so that he may establish his covenant. What covenant? Well, the covenant we talked about back in Genesis 12, that we are are blessed to be a blessing. We are to financially give to others and ultimately finance the gospel. So reading through these scriptures, we see that we have not only been blessed with every spiritual blessing, but we've also been given the ability to bless others. So we are to move out like a camel, like a gemel, in his strength and in his grace, that he may establish his covenant in the hearts of men through us. What a blessing and what a privilege to partner with him. 2 Corinthians 9 continues to instruct us how to give. Verses 6 and 7 says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously, right? So we reap what we sow. And Paul goes on to say, so each one should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not out of regret or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So Paul here is encouraging us as believers to give. He highlights how to give. Basically, the more we sow, the more we'll grow, right? But it's not just how much we give, but more importantly, what the posture is of our heart in our giving. This is the most important factor of all. So God has made it really easy for us. He said, let joy be your barometer in giving, be it your time, your finances, or words of encouragement. Let joy be your barometer because God loves a cheerful giver. So as we wrap up, I want to look at this verse from Philemon 1.6, and it is a great summary as we go forth as a spiritual gimel this year. It says that the communication of your faith be effective by acknowledging every good thing that is within you. When we have a revelation of every good thing in us, that we are loved, that we are blessed and enriched with everything we need in Christ, that we have the power of the Holy Spirit, that we have the grace of His ability to be a blessing and to give, then the communication or the sharing or the giving away of our faith will be effective or will work. It will do what it was meant to do to bless others and glorify God. That is awesome. So in closing, what is the result of being such a generous gimel as we go forward? Well, as we read the words of Solomon, who was the wisest and perhaps the wealthiest man in history, in Proverbs 11.25, here it's um, around the camel's neck, it says, a generous soul will prosper. And he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And I think we have all experienced this. And that's why Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When we bless others, we are not only blessed and refreshed ourselves, but we model generosity, which builds relationships and releases thanksgiving. It stirs hearts to pray and motivates others to give and ultimately glorifies God and points hearts to the great love of God and Yeshua Jesus, his son. It is truly more blessed to give than to receive, and we have been blessed to be a blessing. 
Well, I'm encouraged and I pray this teaching was an encouragement to you as you begin the year 5783 with the Lord and with Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are the giver of all good things, that you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you that you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Thank you that you have enriched us in everything in him, in all utterance, in all knowledge. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us your ability, your grace to abound in every good work, Lord. So Lord, now we rise up and release. We crown the year. We overcome the year with your abundant provision, with your goodness. And our paths will drip with abundance because we are following you and drawing from your abundance that you have freely given us. So thanks guys for listening. Happy New Year. Shana Tova 5783 in Yeshua Jesus and I will see you out there.